When my wife came home that evening, she looked determined, almost excited about something. She said she wanted to invite both our parents over to our place. At first, I didn't quite understand why she was so eager, especially considering that our folks had been here just two days ago. I looked at her for a second, then said, all right, but you know they were literally here a couple of days back. I wasn't sure why she was in such a rush to bring everyone back again, but I figured she had her reasons. She looked at me, a little exasperated, and said, listen, I was talking to my friends, and there's this trend on TikTok, it's about testing our parents for how modern they are. She went on to explain how people were asking their parents questions from TikTok about things like open relationships and modern views on marriage. The whole thing sounded ridiculous to me. I've always known my parents to be set in their ways, not really interested in whatever trendy nonsense was floating around on social media. And honestly, I doubted they would take kindly to being interrogated with questions about their views on relationships by my wife with a phone in her hand. Knowing my parents as I do, I wasn't expecting them to respond well to any of those questions. They weren't the type to entertain modern progressive ideas, let alone from an internet trend. I looked at her and said, you know what they're like. I doubt they'll be up for this kind of thing. I spoke firmly because I knew how my parents were, and I wasn't about to put them through something that would make them feel uncomfortable or insulted. But seeing the excitement in her eyes, I didn't want to completely shut her down. So, I offered a compromise. Look, I told her, if this is that important to you, then maybe we can just wait a week. We're planning on visiting them soon anyway, right? Why not just bring it up then instead of calling them over right away? Give it a bit of time. I thought that was reasonable enough, give it a week, maybe she'd lose interest or see it wasn't worth it. But she frowned, clearly not thrilled about waiting that long. Sometimes, she could be stubborn, especially when she got an idea in her head that she liked. She paused for a moment, then said, okay, okay. But what if we also invited my parents? It'd be more fun with both sets, right? I had to admit, she had a point. If her parents were involved too, it might balance things out a bit. At least that way, we'd all be in it together, and my parents wouldn't feel like they were singled out for some awkward modern quiz. Besides, her parents were a bit more open-minded, so maybe that would help the situation from getting tense or uncomfortable. But even then, she couldn't let go of the idea. She added, almost pleading, I just really can't wait. It's something I need to know, and I feel like it'll be a lot of fun for everyone. I sighed. She had her heart set on this, clearly, and there was no point in arguing with her when she was this adamant. So, I nodded, all right, fine. We'll do it. But let's make sure it's something they're comfortable with. And we'll wait a week, like we said, all right? She agreed, but I could see how impatient she was. That's how she is sometimes, once she gets excited about something, it's all or nothing. She finally smiled and said, fine, a week. But you know I can't wait to get everyone together for this. The day finally arrived when we were going to see my parents. The whole drive over, I couldn't help but wonder how this modernity test idea was going to pan out. My wife had been impatient about it all week, and now, as we headed to my parents' house, she was practically buzzing with excitement. I stayed quiet, focusing on the road, trying to prepare myself for the inevitable awkwardness. I knew my parents, they weren't exactly the most progressive, and I expected this to be a difficult conversation. But if she was this set on it, then I was ready to go along and see where it led. The moment we stepped into my parents' house, my wife wasted no time. She didn't even wait until everyone was settled before she popped the question, hey, do you want to see how modern you are? I stood there, silently, already feeling the tension rise. My parents looked at each other, puzzled, but then they shrugged. To my surprise, they seemed okay with it. My dad said, why not, let's give it a try. I hadn't expected them to agree so casually. Maybe they thought it was just a harmless game. I glanced at my wife who was already beaming with excitement. We made our way to the living room, and while my mom brewed some tea, my wife took out her phone, ready with her TikTok questions. 
my parents settled on the couch, and I took a seat across from them, trying to keep a neutral expression. My wife started with some easy questions at first, just to warm them up. Then, she got to the more controversial ones. What do you think about open relationships? How do you feel about parties where people swap partners? Would you ever try something like that? I could feel my shoulders tense up as she went on. I expected my parents to be shocked or to shut the whole thing down immediately. But to my surprise, they didn't. Instead, they listened to each question thoughtfully. My dad even laughed at a few of them, and my mom nodded along. They answered honestly, and though some of their responses were a bit vague, it was clear they weren't outright rejecting these ideas. My wife seemed pleased, nodding enthusiastically as she recorded their answers. I was sitting there, half expecting one of them to put an end to it, to say this was ridiculous. But they didn't. They kept going, answering each question as if it were a normal conversation. At one point, my wife asked if they would ever consider trying something like an open relationship. I expected my mother to react with shock, but instead, she just smiled and said, well, you never know what life might bring. My father nodded in agreement, adding, we're not that old, you know. I was stunned. I had always thought of my parents as traditional, set in their ways. To hear them speak so openly about these things made me realize that maybe I didn't know them as well as I thought. Maybe they had changed over the years, or maybe I had just never really asked them these kinds of questions before. As the conversation went on, I found myself getting more and more surprised. My wife asked about partner swapping parties, and again, my parents didn't seem completely opposed to the idea. They laughed it off, but there was no outright denial, no sign of disgust or shock. I sat there, trying to process what I was hearing. It wasn't that they were eager to try these things, but they weren't dismissing them either. They were open, in a way that I had never expected them to be. I glanced at my wife, who was clearly enjoying this far more than I was. That evening, we were winding down after a long day. My wife and I were sitting in the living room, chatting, while she was happily texting with her friends. It had been a strange day with all the questions to my parents, but it seemed like everyone was in a good mood, my wife especially. The atmosphere was relaxed, and I was starting to think we could just enjoy the rest of the evening. Then, out of nowhere, we heard a knock on the door. I got up, curious, and walked over to see who it could be. When I opened the door, there he was, my brother. Now, I have to admit, I've never had a good relationship with my brother. Growing up, he always seemed to get more attention. He was the golden boy, the one who could do no wrong, and it left a bitter taste in my mouth. As we grew older, that sense of rivalry never really disappeared. He was always full of himself, walking around like he owned the place, and I found it impossible to respect him. So when I saw him standing there at my door, I felt my jaw tighten. This wasn't exactly the kind of surprise I wanted to deal with that night. What made things worse was how my wife reacted. The moment she saw him, she practically jumped up from her seat and started peppering him with questions, almost as if she'd been waiting for him to show up. She started asking him the same questions she'd been asking my parents earlier, questions about open relationships, swapping partners, and all that nonsense. And, much to my dismay, my brother didn't even hesitate. He played right along, agreeing with everything, nodding, and smiling as if he was all for it. It was infuriating. It felt like he was trying to make a point, like he was showing off in front of my wife. We hadn't seen each other in a long time, and I remembered why that was. Even when we did talk, it always felt like there was something off. He had this way of acting around my wife that made my skin crawl, like he was flirting or trying to get her attention. I never trusted him, and seeing him now, with that smug smile, just reminded me of why I kept my distance from him. And here he was, in my house, trying to charm his way into this stupid TikTok trend that my wife had gotten hooked on. I had had enough. I wasn't going to sit there and let him make himself comfortable in my home, acting like he belonged there. I spoke up, making it clear that I wasn't interested in his opinions or his presence. Look, this doesn't concern you. If you're here, just sit down and keep quiet. My voice was firm, 
and I didn't care if it came off as rude. I could see my wife shoot me a surprised look, and my brother raised his eyebrows, clearly taken aback. But I didn't care. This was my house, and I wasn't about to let him waltz in and take over the conversation. The room went quiet for a moment. My wife looked at me, her face a mix of shock and confusion, and my brother just sat there, staring at me like I had crossed some kind of line. My parents, who had been quietly watching from the other side of the room, seemed stunned. Then my wife spoke up, her voice sharp, you're being unreasonable. My parents nodded in agreement, and I could hear someone mutter that I was out of line. But I didn't flinch. I knew what I was doing. I wasn't going to let my brother think he could just show up and act like he owned the place. Without another word, I reached out, took my wife's hand, and pulled her up from her seat. We're leaving, I said, my voice calm but firm. She tried to protest, but I wasn't having it. I led her out of the house, ignoring the stunned expressions and whispers behind us. We got in the car, and I drove us home, not saying a word. I could feel her glaring at me from the passenger seat, but I didn't care. I wasn't about to let anyone, especially my brother, disrespect me in my own home. When we got back home that evening, it didn't take long for things to spiral out of control. The moment we stepped through the door, my wife turned to me, her face flushed with anger. She didn't even wait until we had taken off our coats. What the hell was that, she snapped, her voice already rising. Why did you have to act like that in front of everyone? You embarrassed me, and you embarrassed yourself. I could see she was furious, and she wasn't going to let this go easily. I sighed, knowing what was coming, but I wasn't about to back down either. She kept going, her voice getting louder with every sentence. You acted like a complete jerk. You didn't have to speak to him that way. He's your brother, for God's sake. Do you know how awful that made me feel? You made everything so uncomfortable, and for what? Just because you have some stupid grudge against him? She was pacing back and forth, her hands gesturing wildly, and I could feel my own anger starting to rise. I wasn't in the mood for this. Not after everything that had happened at my parents' house. Do you even understand why I did what I did? I said, my voice low but filled with frustration. Do you get what our relationship has been like? Do you understand how he's always treated me, treated you? I could feel the heat in my chest, the resentment that had been building up for years. He's always been like this. He's always wanted what I have, and now he's trying to pull the same crap with you. How can you not see that? I wasn't yelling, but my voice was firm, every word carrying the weight of years of frustration. I could see her eyes narrowing, her anger not dissipating, but only growing stronger. She stopped pacing and turned to face me, her eyes blazing. You're making all of this up. You're seeing things that aren't there. He wasn't doing anything wrong. He was just trying to be nice, and you blew it way out of proportion. You can't keep holding on to this childish rivalry with him. It's ridiculous. Her words were sharp, and I could feel each one cutting into me. I knew she wasn't going to see it my way, not now, maybe not ever. But I also knew what I had seen, what I had felt. I wasn't imagining it. I knew my brother, and I knew what he was capable of. I clenched my jaw, trying to keep my temper in check, but it was getting harder with every passing second. You think I'm making this up? I said, my voice now tinged with anger. You think I'm just being paranoid? You weren't there growing up with him. You didn't see how he always tried to one-up me, how he always wanted everything I had. And now he's trying to get close to you, and you're just letting it happen. I could see that my words weren't getting through to her. She shook her head, her face a mix of disbelief and frustration. It was like we were speaking different languages, and neither of us was willing to understand the other. She crossed her arms, her voice cold now. You're being ridiculous. This isn't about your brother, it's about you. You're insecure, and you're letting it ruin everything. You need to grow up and stop blaming him for everything that goes wrong. That was it. I could feel something snap inside me. There was no point in continuing this argument. 
She wasn't going to see my side, and I wasn't going to stand there and be told I was the problem. Without another word, I turned and walked away, leaving her standing there in the living room. For the next five days, we barely spoke a word to each other. I was too angry to even look at her, and it seemed like she felt the same. The silence in the house was heavy, almost suffocating, but I didn't care. I wasn't going to be the one to break it. Not this time. I had said what I needed to say, and if she didn't understand, that was on her. I wasn't about to apologize for standing up for myself. Five days passed, and the tension only grew thicker, neither of us willing to make the first move. One evening, my wife approached me, her tone a lot softer than it had been over the past week. She told me she wanted to apologize for everything that had happened. She admitted that the fight had gotten out of hand, and she was willing to move past it if I was. Then, she mentioned something that she and her friends had come up with, an idea to have a party at our house, something to help us unwind and relax. She said it would be a good opportunity for us to have some fun, to reconnect without all the tension from the past week. I looked at her for a moment, unsure, but then decided to go along with it. All right, let's give it a shot, I said, figuring it couldn't hurt to try. The day of the party, we headed over to her friend's place to help set up. When we arrived, I noticed that most of our friends were already there, sitting around, chatting, and enjoying drinks. There was a lightness to the atmosphere, something that felt almost like old times before things had gotten so complicated. We settled in, and as we all sat together, one of my wife's friends stood up and started explaining the real plan for the evening. We thought it might be fun to spice things up a bit, she said, her eyes twinkling mischievously. How about we try something different tonight, a swinger party? Everyone's here, we all know each other, and if anyone feels like swapping partners, great. If not, no pressure. I could feel my stomach tighten at the suggestion. I wasn't sure what to make of it. I looked at my wife, who seemed enthusiastic, and I knew she wanted to at least give it a shot. I leaned in closer to her and said, all right, but we're sticking together. We do this, just the two of us. She nodded, agreeing immediately. She seemed happy that I was willing to be open-minded about it, and honestly, I figured that if it made her happy, I could go along with it, as long as we had boundaries. The rest of the group seemed on board too, and a few of our friends even agreed to swap partners, which surprised me. I guess you never really know what people are up for until the situation presents itself. The evening went on, and to my surprise, it wasn't as uncomfortable as I thought it might be. The atmosphere remained relaxed, almost like any other party, but with a bit of a twist. There was laughter, conversation, and a surprising level of openness that I hadn't expected. I stayed close to my wife, keeping my word that we would just stick together. A few people swapped partners, and it seemed like everyone was having a good time, but I wasn't interested in that. I had agreed to this for her, and as long as we were together, I could handle it. As the night wound down, I found myself feeling more at ease. The whole thing had gone surprisingly well. My wife seemed genuinely happy, and I could tell that this was exactly the kind of break she had wanted, something out of the ordinary, something that let us escape the everyday routine, even if just for a night. I wasn't sure I fully understood it, but I was glad that she was happy. When we finally left the party, we were both in a good mood, and for the first time in a while, it felt like we were on the same page again. On the drive back home, I looked over at her and said, you know, I expected this to be a lot worse. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. She smiled, reaching over to squeeze my hand. I added, but still, I don't really get it. I don't understand people who want to swap partners. It's just not something I think I'd ever be comfortable with. She nodded, understanding, and we both knew that while tonight had been an interesting experience, it wasn't something I was eager to repeat. But for now, we were okay, and that was enough. After attending four of these parties over the next few weeks, things seemed to settle into a rhythm. My wife was happy, and I had to admit, the experiences hadn't been as bad as I'd originally expected. But then one evening, as we were sitting in the living room, she turned to me and said, Hey, I have some good news and some bad news. I could tell by her tone that whatever she was about to say was going to lead to a serious conversation. 
I nodded for her to continue, and she started with the good news. Our parents are coming over to celebrate their anniversary with us, she said with a smile. I felt a wave of relief, it'd be nice to have a normal family gathering for once. But then she added, the bad news is, your brother is coming too. Hearing that, I could feel my mood shift immediately. My brother coming over was never good news, and I had no interest in pretending otherwise. I looked at her, my expression hardening, and I made myself very clear. If he starts acting like he did the last few times, I won't hesitate to throw him out of my house. I don't care if it ruins the celebration. My wife looked at me, her face a mix of worry and frustration. I knew she didn't want any drama, especially not with our families involved, but I wasn't going to tolerate any more nonsense from my brother. She sighed, nodding, and we left it at that. When the day of the anniversary celebration came, everyone arrived in good spirits. The parents were excited, and my brother walked in with his usual swagger, acting as if nothing had happened between us. I kept my distance, focusing on making sure our parents were comfortable. Everything was going well, and for a moment, I allowed myself to believe that maybe, just maybe, we could get through this without any issues. My wife was busy talking with everyone, and I tried to keep my attention on our parents, keeping the atmosphere light and pleasant. At one point, I had to step away to use the bathroom. It wasn't long, but by the time I returned, I noticed something that made my stomach twist. My wife was talking to my brother, and not just in passing, they were deep in conversation, standing close, her expression serious, while his face held that infuriating smirk I knew all too well. I didn't waste any time. I walked right up to them, interrupting whatever they were discussing. What's going on here? I demanded, my eyes fixed on my brother. He seemed caught off guard, stepping back immediately. My wife looked startled, glancing between the two of us. I wasn't about to let this slide. What were you two talking about? I asked, my voice firm. My wife hesitated for a moment, then answered, I was just telling him about the parties we've been going to recently. He said he'd be interested in trying it out too, maybe even organizing something himself, here at our place. I felt a surge of anger. The last thing I wanted was my brother anywhere near that part of our lives. He had a way of ruining everything he touched, and I wasn't about to let him insert himself into something that was supposed to be for us. I looked directly at my wife, my voice cold and clear. That's never going to happen, I said, making sure there was no room for misunderstanding. Not here, not ever. She shrugged, almost dismissively, and said, OK. I could tell she didn't want to push the issue, and I wasn't in the mood for any more discussion about it. After that, the evening continued, and eventually, everyone started to leave. Despite the tension earlier, the rest of the gathering had gone smoothly enough. Our parents were happy, and my brother kept his distance for the remainder of the night. By the time everyone left, it seemed like things were back to normal, at least on the surface. About a month after everything settled down, my wife started a new job. It seemed like a good opportunity for her, and I was genuinely happy that she was excited about it. She'd been in a much better mood since starting, and it felt like things were finally getting back to some kind of normalcy for us. She was leaving the house each morning with a smile, and she seemed to be enjoying her work. It made me hopeful that the tension from the past few months was finally behind us, and we could focus on building something more stable. One evening, after her first week at the new job, she approached me with a casual question. Hey, where does your brother live again? She asked, her tone light, as if it was just a passing curiosity. I looked at her for a moment, a little surprised. It wasn't often that she brought up my brother without there being some specific reason. I gave her the address, and she nodded, adding, oh, that's what I thought. I ran into him a couple of times when I was walking home from work. My initial reaction was to feel uneasy. Running into my brother was rarely a coincidence, and knowing him, I couldn't help but wonder what his intentions were. I tried to keep my voice steady as I asked, what do you mean you ran into him? How often? She shrugged, like it was no big deal. Just a couple of times. I guess he must live nearby. It's just a coincidence. 
I wasn't so sure about that. My brother had a way of showing up when he wanted something, and I didn't like the idea of him suddenly being around my wife, especially now that she was working in his neighborhood. I could feel that old sense of mistrust bubbling up again, but I didn't want to overreact. Instead, I offered a solution. I can pick you up after work if you want. That way, you don't have to worry about running into him again. She smiled, but shook her head. No, it's fine. It's really not a big deal. I didn't even realize he lived around there. She seemed genuinely unconcerned, like it was nothing more than an innocent coincidence. But I knew my brother better than she did. I knew how he operated, and I wasn't about to take any chances. Still, I didn't want to push her too hard or make her think I was being paranoid. I just wanted her to be cautious. All right, I said, nodding. But just be careful, okay? Keep your eyes open. You know how he is. He's always been out to make my life difficult. She gave me a look, half amused and half exasperated. You're overthinking it, she said, but I could tell she was at least taking me somewhat seriously. She knew my history with my brother, even if she didn't fully understand it. I didn't want to make a big deal out of it, but I also couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to this than just chance encounters. I decided to drop it for now, but I made a mental note to keep an eye on the situation. I trusted my wife, but when it came to my brother, trust was something I couldn't afford to give. The rest of the evening went by quietly, but I couldn't help but think about what she'd said. The idea of my brother being anywhere near her made me uneasy, and I didn't want him trying to weasel his way into our lives again. I knew how he operated, and I wasn't about to let him cause any more problems for us. As we sat down for dinner, I looked over at her and said one more time, just remember what I said. He's not someone you can trust. Keep your distance, all right? She nodded, but I could tell she thought I was making too much of it. Okay. Okay, she said, rolling her eyes a little. I'll be careful. I let it go at that, but deep down, I knew I wasn't going to relax until I was sure he was out of the picture. I couldn't shake the feeling that my brother was up to something, and I wasn't going to let my guard down, not when it came to him. If he wanted to stir up trouble, he'd have to get through me first. After a while, I began to notice my wife coming home later and later from work. It started out small, just thirty minutes here or there. At first, I didn't think much of it. She'd say she was stuck finishing something up or that she had to stay behind for a quick meeting and it all seemed reasonable enough. But as the days went by those thirty minutes turned into an hour, then sometimes even longer. One evening, she came home a full two hours later than usual and I could feel the frustration bubbling inside me. I wasn't the type to immediately jump to conclusions, but given everything that had happened recently, I couldn't help but be suspicious. One of those evenings, she came in late, looking a bit flustered, with a hurried explanation that she had been caught up in traffic. I wanted to believe her, but there were too many times where it seemed like there was always some new excuse. Another time, she said she had to help a co-worker finish a project because they were on a tight deadline. Each reason seemed plausible on its own, but when they started piling up, I began to feel like there was something more going on. I tried to push those thoughts aside, but it was getting harder and harder to ignore the feeling that she wasn't being entirely honest with me. Then, there was the night she finally came home two hours late. I had been sitting there, waiting, my frustration growing with every passing minute. When she walked through the door, I didn't hold back. What the hell is going on? I asked, my voice tight. Why are you always coming home late? She looked at me, clearly taken aback by my tone. She put her bag down and sighed, clearly exhausted. Listen, I've been working on a new project at work. It's a big deal, okay? It could mean a raise for me, maybe even a promotion. I've been putting in extra hours because this could be huge for my career. I stared at her for a moment, trying to decide if I believed her. She sounded sincere, but I couldn't shake the nagging thought that maybe there was something else going on. Are you sure you haven't been stopping by to see my brother? I asked, the word slipping out before I could stop myself. I saw her face change instantly, the tiredness replaced by anger. 
She glared at me, her eyes narrowing. Are you serious right now? You're still on about your brother? You know what, I'm tired of this. He probably thinks about you a lot less than you think about him. You're the one who can't let it go, not him. Her words hit me like a slap. I could tell she was genuinely angry, and maybe even a little hurt. I hadn't meant to accuse her, but I couldn't deny that the thought had been eating at me. I took a deep breath, trying to calm myself down. Maybe I was overreacting, maybe I was letting my issues with my brother cloud my judgment. I looked at her, her expression still full of frustration, and I finally nodded. All right, maybe I'm overreacting, I said, my voice softer. I didn't want to fight with her, not over this, and definitely not if I was wrong. She shook her head, still looking upset, but at least the tension seemed to ease a little as I took a step back from the confrontation. A week had passed since our last argument, but my wife's late returns from work hadn't stopped. I tried to give her the benefit of the doubt, convincing myself that maybe it really was just work. But the nagging doubts persisted. One evening, she came home looking unusually cheerful, which immediately caught my attention. She seemed excited, almost as if she was waiting for the right moment to tell me something. Finally, after dinner, she leaned in and said, I've been working on something big with my friend, and it's almost ready. Her eyes were bright, and I could tell she was genuinely enthusiastic about whatever this was. I looked at her, curious but wary. What kind of surprise? I asked, trying to gauge her expression. She smiled, her excitement unwavering. You remember those parties we've been going to? Well, it's something like that, but we're adding a twist this time. I raised an eyebrow, unsure of where she was going with this. A twist? Like what? She laughed, clearly enjoying keeping me in suspense. We're going to have a couple of secret guests, people you wouldn't expect, and it's going to be amazing. Trust me, you're going to love it. I couldn't help but feel a mix of curiosity and suspicion. The idea of a surprise, especially one involving secret guests, made me uneasy. But at the same time, her excitement was contagious, and I found myself wondering what they could possibly have planned. Wait a second, I said, trying to get more information, this is all going to be happening at our place. She nodded, her smile widening. Yes, that's the best part. We're setting everything up here, and it's going to be perfect. You don't have to worry about anything. Just come home from work, and it'll all be ready for you. I leaned back, processing what she was telling me. The fact that it was happening in our house added a layer of concern. I wasn't sure how comfortable I was with the idea of having people, secret guests, no less, in my own home without knowing who they were but I didn't want to rain on her parade, especially when she seemed so genuinely happy about it. All right, I finally said, nodding slowly. I'll play along. But you know me, I don't like surprises, so I hope this really is something worth all the secrecy. She beamed, clearly pleased that I was willing to go along with it. I couldn't help but wonder what kind of twist she and her friend had come up with. My mind kept coming back to the parties we had been to before, the swinger events that had pushed my boundaries but ultimately hadn't been as bad as I'd imagined. Maybe it was something similar but with a different dynamic this time. I trusted her, but I also knew that surprises often had a way of going sideways, especially when you involved people I wasn't expecting. Still, there was something about her excitement that made me want to see it through, even if I was on edge about the whole thing. She leaned over, her eyes meeting mine, and said, it's going to be a surprise that you'll actually enjoy. Just trust me on this one. I nodded, giving her a small smile, though the unease hadn't quite left me. Whatever she had planned, I knew I would just have to wait and see. And despite my reservations, there was a part of me that hoped she was right, that this surprise would be worth it, and that, for once, everything would go smoothly. The moment I walked through the door that night, I was greeted by a sight that made my blood run cold. The so-called surprise that my wife had been planning was nothing short of a nightmare. It wasn't just any gathering, it was a full-blown partner-swapping party, and it was already in full swing. People were everywhere, in various states of undress, and the atmosphere was thick with something primal and unsettling. 
It was bad enough to see strangers involved, but then my eyes landed on the worst part of it all, my parents, her parents, all part of this sickening scene. My heart pounded in my chest as I tried to process what I was seeing. I felt like I was in some kind of twisted dream, one that I couldn't wake up from. Then out of the corner of my eye, I saw my wife. And she wasn't just there, she was with my brother, and even worse, with my own father. My mother was there too, sitting nearby, like it was the most normal thing in the world. Everything seemed to move in slow motion as the realization of what was happening crashed over me like a wave. My stomach churned, and a mix of rage and disbelief took hold of me. Without even thinking, I moved toward them. I grabbed my brother, yanking him away from my wife with a force that came from somewhere deep inside me. He barely had time to react before I dragged him across the room and shoved him out the front door, slamming it behind him. My hands were shaking, and my vision felt blurred with rage. I turned back to the room, my eye scanning the shocked faces of everyone still there. I wasn't done yet, not by a long shot. I climbed up onto the nearest table, trying to make myself heard over the chaos. That's it. It's over. I shouted, my voice cracking with fury. Everyone, get the hell out of my house. I don't care who you are or what you're doing, get out, now. My voice echoed through the room, and for a moment, there was nothing but stunned silence. I looked directly at my parents, my in-laws, the people who were supposed to be my family. You're no family of mine. Not anymore. I'm done with all of you. My words hung in the air, and I could see the shock and disbelief on their faces, but I didn't care. The betrayal cut too deep, and there was no coming back from this. Slowly, people began to move, gathering their things, their expressions a mix of shame, confusion, and even defiance. My parents tried to approach me, to say something, but I stepped back, pointing towards the door. I said, get out, I repeated, my voice cold and final. They hesitated for a moment, then turned and left, followed by the others. One by one, they all filed out of the house, leaving behind nothing but a deafening silence. The air was thick with the aftermath of what had just happened, and I could feel the adrenaline still coursing through my veins. Finally, the door closed behind the last of them, and I was left standing there, breathing heavily. I looked around the room, at the mess that had been left behind, and then my eyes landed on my wife. She was still there, standing off to the side, her face pale, her eyes wide. There was a moment of silence between us, a chasm that seemed impossible to cross. I could feel the anger still burning inside me, but beneath it, there was something else, a hollow emptiness that I couldn't ignore. The betrayal was too much, and I had no words left for her. A fight broke out between us, words flying back and forth, each more hurtful than the last. There was no coming back from what had happened, and we both knew it. She tried to explain, to justify what she had done, but I wasn't interested in hearing it. The trust was gone, shattered beyond repair. Eventually, the argument died down, leaving only exhaustion in its wake. She stood there, looking at me, but there was nothing left to say. One by one, the others had left, and now it was just her. Just the two of us, standing in the wreckage of what used to be our life together. The next morning, I woke up with the same cold, hollow feeling that had settled in my chest the night before. Everything felt surreal, like I was moving through a fog. The images of what I had seen were still fresh in my mind, and the betrayal cut deeper each time I replayed it. I knew what needed to be done, and I wasn't going to hesitate. I got up, went to the closet, and started pulling out her things. I grabbed anything that belonged to her, clothes, shoes, anything that reminded me of her, and threw it all into a bag. I didn't care about being gentle, I just wanted it all out of my sight. When she finally came downstairs, she saw me there, packing her things without a word. She stood frozen for a moment, her eyes wide as she realized what I was doing. What are you doing? she asked, her voice shaky. I didn't look at her as I answered. What does it look like? I'm done. You're leaving. You're not staying here another second. I could hear her gasp, and she tried to argue, saying it was just a mistake, that she didn't mean for it to go this far. 
but her words fell on deaf ears. I had made up my mind, and nothing she could say was going to change that. I shoved the last of her things into the bag, zipped it up, and handed it to her. Take it and go, I said, my voice flat, my eyes hard. She took the bag, her hands trembling, and she looked at me with tears welling up in her eyes. I wanted to surprise you, to bring something different into our lives, she said, her voice breaking. And honestly, your brother is a better man than you ever were. That was it. The final nail in the coffin. I felt a surge of anger so intense that I could barely see straight. I turned away from her, walking to the door and opening it wide. Get out, I said, my voice like ice. She hesitated, looking at me one last time, but there was nothing left for her here. She stepped through the door, and I slammed it shut behind her. My hands were shaking, my heart pounding in my chest. I could still hear her outside, yelling something, but I didn't care enough to listen. I locked the door, turned around, and leaned against it, taking a deep breath. The house felt empty, but in a way, it was a relief. I knew I had done what needed to be done. There was no going back now, and I didn't want to. I had reached my breaking point, and I wasn't about to let her or anyone else make a fool of me again. I walked back into the living room, taking in the mess that was left behind from the night before. The silence was heavy, almost suffocating, but it was better than the chaos that had filled this space just hours earlier. I sat down, running my hands through my hair, trying to collect my thoughts. The weight of everything that had happened was finally starting to sink in, and I felt a strange mix of sadness and relief. I had lost something, but maybe it was something I never really had to begin with. The betrayal had shattered any illusions I had about our marriage, and now all that was left was the reality of what she had done. Eventually, we went through the motions of getting divorced. There were no long conversations, no attempts at reconciliation, just paperwork, signatures, and a cold, formal ending to what had once been our life together. She moved out completely, and we stopped talking altogether. It was like we had never been anything more than strangers passing by each other. There were moments when I thought back to the good times, but those memories felt like they belonged to someone else, to a different life that no longer existed. And as the divorce was finalized, I knew that this was the only way forward. Already later, we finalized the divorce, and with that, I closed the door on that chapter of my life for good. After the divorce, I thought that would be the end of it. I wanted nothing more than to close that chapter of my life and move on. But it wasn't long before I heard rumors that my ex-wife had started seeing my brother. I shouldn't have been surprised. There had always been something there, something that I never wanted to acknowledge, but now it was out in the open. She had gone to him, and he, of course, was all too happy to take what was once mine. I tried not to let it get to me. She was out of my life, and as far as I was concerned, she could do whatever she wanted. But deep down, it still stung. The thought of her with him, the same person who had been a thorn in my side my entire life, was a hard pill to swallow. At first, I kept my distance, not wanting to get involved in whatever they had going on. But then, I started hearing things, whispers from mutual friends, hints that things weren't as rosy as they seemed. My brother, it turned out, was not the charming guy he pretended to be. He was abusive, manipulative, and worse yet, he had begun physically hurting her. She had made her choice, and I wanted to keep telling myself that it wasn't my problem anymore. But the more I heard, the harder it became to ignore. It wasn't just the betrayal that hurt, it was knowing that she was now trapped in a situation she couldn't escape from, and it was my brother who was putting her through that. One day, I got a call from one of her friends. She sounded worried, almost panicked, as she told me what had happened. My brother had hit her again, this time worse than before. The friend said she was scared, that she didn't know who else to call. I hung up the phone, my hand shaking with a mix of anger and something else, something that felt a lot like guilt. Despite everything that had happened between us, I knew I couldn't just sit back and do nothing. I didn't want her back, not after everything, but I also couldn't stand the thought of my brother getting away with this. Without even thinking twice, I grabbed my keys and headed out the door. 
The drive to my brother's place felt like it took forever, even though I was probably speeding the entire way. My mind was racing, replaying everything that had happened over the past few months. The betrayal, the humiliation, and now this. By the time I pulled up in front of his building, I could feel the rage boiling over. I wasn't there to talk, and I wasn't there to reason with him. I was there to make sure he knew there were consequences for what he had done. I banged on his door, and when he opened it, the look on his face told me he knew exactly why I was there. He barely had time to say anything before my fist connected with his jaw. It was a blur after that, I hit him again, harder this time, and he stumbled back, trying to defend himself. All the years of resentment, all the anger I had held back, came pouring out in that moment. He had taken everything from me, and now he was hurting someone who, despite everything, had once meant the world to me. I didn't hold back, not this time. He needed to know that he couldn't just do whatever he wanted without facing the consequences. Eventually, he managed to push me off, his face bruised and bloody. He looked at me, his eyes wide with shock and fear. For the first time, I saw something in him that I had never seen before, vulnerability. But it didn't matter. I wasn't there to feel sorry for him. I pointed at him, my voice cold and steady. If you ever lay a hand on her again, I swear to God, I will end you. He didn't say anything, just nodded, his eyes downcast. I turned and walked away, leaving him there, beaten and humiliated. It wasn't justice, not really, but it was the only thing I could do to make sure he knew he couldn't get away with it. A few days later, I heard from her again. She had found out what I had done, and she came to see me. She looked tired, worn down, but there was something else in her eyes, something that almost looked like gratitude. She thanked me for what I had done, but before she could say anything more, I cut her off. I didn't do it for you, I said, my voice flat. I did it because he needed to be put in his place. You don't mean anything to me anymore. The words came out harsher than I intended, but I needed her to understand. I wasn't her saviour, and I wasn't interested in being part of her life again. She looked at me for a long moment, then nodded, her expression unreadable. I get it, she said quietly, and with that, she turned and left. I watched her walk away, and for the first time in a long time, I felt a strange sense of closure. She was no longer my problem, and neither was he. They had both made their choices, and now they had to live with them. As far as I was concerned, that chapter of my life was over, and I was finally ready to move on. Whatever happened to them from here on out was none of my business. They had each other, and I had my freedom, and that was enough for me.